What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking all about the Royal Champion, specifically her ability, how to get the most value out of it, how it works, everything Royal Champion at Town Hall 13 you guys need to know. Let's get right into it though. Um, this first technique I had to show, it's been working very well, and you can see it's basically dropping down one Earthquake spell, one Lightning spell to target the Inferno Tower, then boom, hit that Royal Champion ability right away, it gets in there, and the combined damage of the Royal Champion's shield plus the Lightning Spell and the Earthquake Spell used at the beginning is enough to one-shot that Inferno Tower down. So you can see here, gets that taken out, gets some other defensive uh, buildings, great value for the price of just two spells in the Royal Champion. Um, so it's something I'm a big fan of, that technique. I'm going to back out because I don't want to burn any bases. That base was not actually tripled. Same with this one, and it's going to show perhaps the limitations of this uh, technique. It can set you up for some nice attacks, but you also have to be careful, especially on a fresh attack, that there's not going to be Teslas popping, or even worse sometimes, skeleton traps, because the skeleton traps take up a lot of time for the Royal Champion to take them out one spear at a time. Um, so you'll see that happen once again, one Earthquake, one Lightning Spell. Don't think the order matters too much, which, which you drop first. Uh, but here, two Teslas pop, plus the Skeletons. I think the plan was to have the Royal Champion target that Archer Tower, then come in, and um, you know these next four buildings are all right there for her, um, and be able to use that ability quickly to take that all out and have her move on to other defenses. But in this case, it's not going to work out. The reason this is powerful is because the single Inferno is a big enemy of the Royal Champion. Because she doesn't have the cloak that the Queen does, um, she cannot drop that uh, Inferno Beam. And it will take her down very quickly. Even if you use her ability, it hardly matters. Um, especially because the ability alone is not enough to take out the Inferno Tower. Um, so by combining her with a Lightning Spell and an Earthquake Spell, you can right away one-shot that Inferno down right out of the gate and then let her move on and get other defensive value. And oftentimes the Earthquake Spell and the Lightning Spell will weaken other defenses, making them also able to be taken out in one shot, as we saw in that first uh, example attack. We're going to back out because that was not a three-star either. Move on to some attacks that did three-star, both our attacks and their attacks. Talk about how the Royal Champion was used and what we can learn from it, because there's definitely a lot to learn from. Um, but I wanted to first show that one little trick. Definitely would recommend using it, guys. Um, against the right base, it can set you up if you can get a single Inferno down uh, to set up a Queen Charge, set up a Sui Hero, whatever the case is. Just know you can weaken defenses and really set yourself up with that strategy. Um, but I want to shout out the uh, Discord server. Uh, people were actually... Uh, gave me the idea to do a Royal Champion video in the Discord server that I have. The link to join is in the description. Uh, anyone is welcome to join, not just my Patreon uh, patrons, although they do get their own uh, private Patreon suite with other perks. Um, the regular Discord is welcome to everyone, and I have a spot for video suggestions, which I, as you can tell, I definitely listen to. Um, this was a good idea for a video. So, uh, Royal Champion coming in here. One of the downsides of using the Royal Champion you know, with an air attack like Dragons or even Lalo, the reason we don't see it as much is because she's going to lure out the CC and the Lava Hound specifically. Oftentimes there's a Lava Hound, maybe it's an Ice Golem, um, could be Valks even. Things that will only come out if a ground troop like the Royal Champion is coming through. In this case, um, you know, Hounds are not that popular, but I use a Hound usually in my clan castle and you know some other people do as well as you can tell here and that's a little bit of a hassle for the dragons in this case it works out but sometimes it's worth it to use the royal champion somewhere else where she's not going to lure out the lava hound in this case it was unavoidable um just because it was right in the middle of the base there that there really was no way to get value from the royal champion besides just sending her in so it's a risk you take um lava hound makes it tough because that might have not otherwise come out but things still work out here and definitely get a lot more value value uh Lava Hound aside, with the Royal Champion being inside the base with those dragons or with the Lalo, um, depending on the attack you're going to. So, one thing to point out about the Royal Champion as we back out of this one, which did triple as you can see, is how does the shield work? And in my experience, the way the Royal Champion shield works is that um, whichever defensive building she's close and she's the most, she's nearest is the word I'm looking for. Whatever defense she's closest to is the defense that the shield will target first, and then it'll bounce to the next closest building, not necessarily to where she's standing, but to where that first defense is located. Um, 
and then it'll bounce to the next closest building from that defense it was just at. So in that case, um, it's not always going to take out the four buildings that are closest to the Royal Champion at the moment you activate it, but instead it'll take out the four buildings uh, that are closest to each other, kind of like how an E-Dragon takes out buildings. So as you can see here, her ability is activated, and what did it target? Um, Wizard Tower, Multi, Inferno, uh, Grand Warden, sorry, I'm like getting dementia, Grand Warden, then whatever building that was, maybe like a bomb tower, whatever just got taken out, not a bomb tower, something was there uh, that got one-shotted. These were all very close to each other, but they were not the closest building to the Royal Champion. You can see the Archer Tower was closer to her. Uh, she was standing back, you know, by this builder hut. So keep that in mind, guys. What it's going to do is it's going to go to the nearest building, then stop. Okay, what's the nearest building to that first building, and then go from there. Pretty straightforward, um, but important to know that if you have like a Inferno Tower that's isolated, maybe there's like a little island around it, as we often see, it's going to be hard for her to hit that because it might just kind of go in a circle around defenses that are closer together. So if you're thinking you're going to use that first strategy I showed at the beginning of the video, you have to make sure that there's a path into the Inferno Tower um, if you're trying to get that taken out. Because otherwise what's going to happen as we go times two here is that it'll path around the Inferno and you won't get the building you desire. That's a good defensive thing to keep in mind too is you can make the Royal Champion shield a little bit less uh, effective by having your important buildings more isolated, the ones you don't want her to target. And that might even be Teslas because she can one-shot the Teslas very effective against them. Might want to keep them a little more isolated. This is very, you know, niche base building. I wouldn't worry about it too much for most of your bases. There's other things to worry about that'll triple you much more than trying to predict how someone's Royal Champion will work. But it's good to know for base building and maybe even more so for attacking uh, that that's how her shield is going to path around the base. So um, we saw another attack in the background there. Let's see what we have here. Then we'll switch gears, take a look at uh, two of our triples from this war. Nice little uh, lightning hog attack here. This one was really well set up. We will go ahead and fast forward until the uh, spells are dropped. So what's going on here is we're going to do the king to just kind of set things up, clear some trash, make it so the queen can kind of come in behind, um, gets, you know, some Teslas, which is always good value, uh, and then he'll, we'll clear out some other buildings. Super Wall Breaker coming in, Ice Golem, Queen, gonna sue down that Town Hall, great value there. Clan Castle was taken out, so nothing to worry about uh, in terms of Clan Castle troops. And then the Royal Champion is just gonna be used here with the Hogs. So the Royal Champion works great with hogs, with hybrid, with straight miners, any of the, you know, any of the hog miner combinations. She goes in and is able to, um, to just kind of come through, take out buildings along with them. And if it's hogs, she can take out skeletons, heroes. I would not use her just with miners because if all the miners go underground, oftentimes a single inferno will lock onto her. So the hogs really have a lot of benefit. That's why people use hybrid because they don't duck underground. They will cover your royal champion and that will allow her to kind of be hidden from a lot of defenses that could do her harm, especially the single infernos. One thing we often see is the siege barracks being dropped maybe as part of a funnel and then hogs will come out of it later. And then you drop your Royal Champion with those hogs because they provide her cover as she's moving through, uh, making it so an Inferno Tower or other defenses won't lock onto her as quickly, getting her much more value. The hogs are kind of just sacrificial to tank uh, until they get taken out eventually. Um, so th she, she works well kind of with the hog miner push through the base. Sometimes you're gonna use her like on the like, outskirts to set things up if necessary. That's a little bit more for Lalo or for some more precision attacks. She can take out um, you know, these defenses on the outside to set up better pathing. That's where you might use that first technique I showed at the beginning of the video where you can take down an Inferno Tower and set something else up. Um, but don't underestimate, as we saw, her value when just used as in, you know, in the scrum with you know, the Hogs, the Miners, even the Dragons, the Lalo. Uh, she offers a lot in that sense too. Let's take a look at this attack by Yoda, see how the Royal Champion was utilized. King, uh, late ability, but still gets the, uh, the value that was needed there, the uh, Archer Tower and the Scatter Shot from that compartment. Sets up the Queen Charge here. 
Um, you're gonna have to hit her ability. We'll go ahead and fast forward to get to the part we're focusing on for this video. But I believe the Royal Champion is just used with the Lalo here, or maybe a little bit off to the side to kind of set things up. Fast forward as the Lava Hound goes down. Lalo should start in just a moment here. Defensive Queen's down, that's all we need. Here comes the Slammer and everything else. Okay, so Lalo comes in. What the Royal Champion's able to do here is to kind of narrow down the pathing. And um, the CC is already out, so the Lava Hound has been taken care of, which frees her up to kind of go wherever she needs to in the base. But in this case, um, you know, it's kind of a wide spread of defenses. So the Road Champion coming in is going to kind of help narrow things down so they go straight to the Town Hall and get to that back end as quickly as possible. So there she goes. Unfortunately, she's going to pull a Skelly Trap or two on the way, but she's going to help with that single Inferno. And once the abilities hit, um, you can see right there, bounces off the three defenses, kind of like an E-Dragon uh, Lightning attack will. And then she'll kind of come through, help with these other defenses as well. So she's just carving out better pathing. And for Lalo, it that's the one attack where it makes sense to use her, not necessarily dropping her right next to all the balloons. Because in a sense, she's like faster than the balloons. And she'll just kind of get out in front, get taken out too quickly um, with everything else being air troops. So I would say for Lalo and maybe for dragons, uh, depend, depending on the, the dragon attack, the first one worked okay with her going in with the dragons, but for Lalo especially, you want to let the Lalo do its thing on one side and then kind of have her do her thing on the other to help set up um, for success or use her to help set up the queen charge at the beginning. Uh, you don't have to wait and hold on to her for the end of the attack. Last one, I think this is my own attack here. Um, this was not my plan. I have to give credit to whoever came up with the plan. I did the cleanup attack for this. Um, same exact principle as the last attack, though. Zap Quake, uh, Suey Blimp, just setting up a little nice queen walk on the outside. Very, very simple queen walk. Just one rage for her. Headhunter makes it so nice by not having to use any type of spells to keep her up over the defensive king. She'll come in there, she'll get the Town Hall eventually, after doing with the uh, Clan Castle. And once again, because the Queen dealt with that CC, allows the Royal Champion to access the entire base without luring out, you know, any type of Clan Castle troops we don't want coming out. She's going to come in here and just kind of compliment the King, uh, help with the defensive Queen, who's going to be frozen, help take out these defenses kind of that are closer to the core, which will free up the Lalo just to path straight through the base, um, as opposed to having to kind of wander out to the core then go back out um, so she just you know kind of comes in and complements it it's much more effective for Lalo I mean you don't want your balloons to clump up too much so there's no reason to clump your world champion among your balloons it's different than like a hybrid attack where uh, if she's off to the side she's not going to um, have that same protection with a Lalo she's not going to be protected anyway um, because everything's an air troop and she'll get targeted by cannons and ground expos and stuff like that defensive king etc so um, using her off to the side worked out well nice easy three star and that'll wrap up the video so in you know in summary guys just keep in mind the technique I showed at the beginning keep in mind how the shield works when it's thrown it's going to target the nearest uh, defense then the nearest defense to that first defense and just kind of go uh, with a mind of its own from there to the, the first four defensive buildings it sees. So uh, keep in mind also how to use the, uh, the Royal Champion for these different types of attack strategies, and that pretty much sums it up. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, any thoughts you have, anything you want to add. I'll be sure to give it a heart if I like the comment, and check out the Discord for uh, the community access and um, give me some thoughts on future videos. That'll do it. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, ISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.